and I have just this overwhelming sensation of this is what I was born to do. And if I don't do this, I will regret every day of my life if I don't pursue this as my path. What was that day, that turning point, like what changed that caused you to basically pursue these kind of opportunities full time? So in November 2016, I had been hustling now for a little over three years, almost four. And I had made progress on things. I had done a lot of great things. I made connections. I had some success with a few businesses. And I was actually able to pay off my house early because of these things. But I still wasn't close to my ultimate goal, which was doing this kind of thing full time. Mm. And I remember telling a very close friend of mine, I feel like I should be farther than where I am. I, I feel like I'm not doing what I'm meant to be doing. And he told me, you're not focused. You need to pick one thing and do it amazingly well and do it for a period of time so that you know you gave it your all. And if it fails, so be it. You can now go do another thing. You can give up on that dream, go do something else. And even though it was very scary to commit in January 17 to the Happy Farm D, I was terrified to give up all of this other stuff that I had done and had seen and seen some success with it, but just not what I ultimately wanted, not that freedom that I had desired to do the work I loved, which was mainly teaching. Yeah, and that was one of the best decisions you've made, right? Yeah, hands down. It's, it's, it's that pivotal moment for me of making a scary decision. Mm. You know, I, I don't know if you know this, but 81% of Americans want to write a book. Less than 1% actually do. And of the 1% that does, less than a third actually publish it. Those are some very scary <laughs> stats there. Yeah, but it shows that everyone's got a big dream. Everyone has something that we want to do, but we find whatever excuse we want to not do it. My excuse was being afraid of committing to something too long and afraid also of going all out into one thing and just really trying everything I had to make it work. Because I wanted a safety net, you know? I wanted, well, if this doesn't work out, then I can rely on this pursuit or I could go do that. And it was scary to say to myself, just this, just the Happy Farm D. And, uh, and that, that day again, remind me, January 2017? January 2017 is okay. when I launched the Happy Farm D and I committed to myself, to my friends, to my coach. I will do this and I'm gonna do this for 12 months. If I don't see the goals happen that I want, then I will give it up. I'll go figure, figure out something else. And that was scary because it's like, ah, uh, yeah. Okay, I gotta try. I have to go <laughs> really, really hard. Okay, well, it is 2019 now. Yeah. February sec uh, 3rd, 2019. Yeah. A little over two years. Uh, two years. Tell me about the opportunities that you are working on now. Like, what is, what is Alex Barker doing now? You know, how do you feel? Is it what you expected? Is it everything you wanted? And what are those opportunities you're working on now? It's everything I wanted. Of course, the grass is always greener. You know, of course, jealousy comes up. Of course, I'm like, oh, I'd love to have that. We were just talking before this. I wish someone could help me with video. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's always something more than I'm striving for, but this lifestyle, this, the work that I do, the people that I help, um, it is everything I wanted. So what am I doing now? I get to help grow this company. I get to hire people who are working with pharmacists and helping them get into new jobs or start businesses. 
And that to me is extremely fulfilling. Um, a lot of my work now is very cerebral in nature and it's a lot of one-on-one -on -one hand holding. But I also work on bigger projects. And the main things that I work on are my book that's coming out, uh, a biannual summit that I do, and uh, I also run this pretty big course that is all about helping pharmacists transition, whatever that next thing is. So a lot of different projects. Yeah. And I'm, you seem like a very organized, goal-setting type of guy. <laughs> If, if you would get a different <laughs> angle of this camera to see, you'd be like, ah, this guy's not so organized. <laughs> but, okay, so 2019. Yeah. Everyone has New Year resolutions. Do yep. you have a list of your own? Um, I, besides learning magic, no. There's, <laughs> there's not too many resolutions that I want to add. The big one I want to have is um, I want to get a thousand people in my course. I want a thousand people to transition out of their job mm -hmm. and into something that they like better. The other thing I'd like to see happen is 10,000 books uh, go into pharmacists' hands, which is again all about helping them in their transitions and in their careers. And I'd like to take 100% of those proceeds of those books to go straight into an adoption fund to help a family mm -hmm. afford adoption. Um, I'd love to help multiple families, but the goal right now is just for one. Okay. So that's 2019. So, book you that that's that's impressive, right? And you just talked about those stats where 80 something percent want to write a book. Yes. One percent, only one percent, uh, yes. and you made that one percent. Yeah, I'm the one percent. So books, you know, personally, I think books are a lot of work. Why why did you write the book, and why why adoption? Why this book? Um, I called it indispensable because I feel like the big problem right now in pharmacy is that people feel dispensable. Mm. People feel like a cog in a machine and that anyone, anyone could replace them. At any moment, a company could let you go and hire a new grad for cheaper. It's not the new grad's fault. It's just the way the system is at the moment. And a lot of my work is teaching people how to create value, how to create experiences that companies want. And I wanted this book to be like a primer for people to jumpstart their creative energies to get involved in their career again. So many people are in a place right now where they are scared of what's going to happen to their career. They don't want to lose their jobs. They don't want to go part time. They don't want to be doing the same monotonous thing over and over but there's not really anyone helping them at this point to figure out what can I do with my degree and how do I find a job? And so this book, I wanted to be a very simple guide with a lot of uh, action steps and questions to help get people thinking again, okay, I have these strengths, I have these natural talents, who's gonna find that valuable? And how do I position myself to get into this career? Um, writing a book is not easy. <laughs> um, I have worked on this book since November of 2017. Wow, okay. So, yeah, year and a half. <laughs> yeah, year and a half. And, <laughs> and I ran into my first roadblock when I was about 16,000 words in. And I was, I, I was scared. I was scared what people may say when they read this book. I was scared what they may think of me and what they might say, getting one star reviews on Amazon. I was, I was uncomfortable with the book because I was so raw and trying to just be me as much as me as possible without sounding academic or boring. And I realized I needed something to motivate me. Um, and in the beginning, I didn't know what is actually going to push me to get this done because it became a, a chore to really slog through the material. And I eventually decided, well, what would really motivate me to do this? And I thought, how cool would it be is if I sold 10,000 books and I used all of the money that we gained from it to go right into an adoption fund. Mm. And that came just with like me, I think in the shower, you know, shower <laughs> thought, where I was just, you know, scrubbing the old bod and going, 
man, this book, how, how, what am I going to do about it? Uh, I have a shop. This is a scrubby. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's gotcha. a little yeah. loofah. <laughs> and I thought, man, if I could put all of that energy into helping a family adopt a child, like that would excite me. So, um, adoption fun. Why, why are you choosing of all things to contribute a hundred percent of the proceeds to adoption fund? There's a lot of ways that we can contribute in the world. But I'm of the belief and passion that the way we change the world is through helping families. And there's no greater sign of love that I see in this world of someone who takes a complete stranger hmm. and brings them into their family. Um, it gets me emotional just thinking about it because, you know, it's not just that families that affected, it's a community it's a huge family it's the world ultimately and it all because one life has changed and there can be no greater impact I think in this world by helping families adopt you sound like you're speaking from experience uh, I am in a way but that's probably a story for another time <laughs> okay uh, nice nice cliffhanger there for the audience uh, so the, the book, um, it, it obviously sounds like you put a lot of time into this book. It's, it's very meaningful and personable to you. How can, you know, my viewers, of course, and, and potentially your viewers here and get the book? Like, where can they find it? Yeah, easiest way is to just check out Amazon, Indispensable hmm. by Alex Barker. <laughs> and uh, we'll put a link in the description down below, right? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely do that. Yeah. Uh, well, Alex, it's it's been a pleasure talking to you, getting to know a little bit more about your comedic side, <laughs> and uh, well-rounded story all together. Well, thanks for your time. So if you guys want to see more of Alex, uh, he has a website that you can find lots of great information about, thehappyfarmd.com. Yes, sir. Yeah, and thanks for having me. This has been a blast, and I really appreciate your time. All right. Thanks, Alex. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in and watching the video. If you like the content, definitely hit the Impro RX button over to your left to subscribe and definitely check out more videos over here uh, to your right. Now, as always, if you have questions, comments, and even better, suggestions for future videos, definitely let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, until next time guys.